Hello and welcome back for the third and final game of day three for Starletter. Season 10, European Division. We're gonna have one game left today. We're gonna have one game left. I already said that. These intros are getting increasingly difficult. Well, we're gonna see Hellraisers, which is not really Hellraisers, but rather Relax. They just have a different name on, but you'll see the name Hellraisers appear. Uh, taking on Virtus Pro. So both of the teams pretty well known. Both of the teams not really having the best results lately, but both of the teams also very known for their aggression. I'm looking really forward to the game, and I think you should too. Before I jump into the game, um, it's an unofficial broadcast. Official broadcast is on twitch.tv slash dota starletter underscore en, which is hosted by Beyond the Summit, of course, and casted by Zayori and Blaze, I believe, still. And... Uh, yeah, I don't have a co-caster, so you're you're look looking at your commentator, your host, and your analyst all in one, and of course, slightly slightly co-casting with the Twitch chat if I if they pick me out on a mistake that I make, which I sometimes do. So let's just jump ourselves into the draft because you already saw the first pick happening. It was the phases void, death prophet after that, and you already have your combination going with that as well, uh, because you can now of course have a chronosphere on everybody, and then. With the Death Prophet Ultimate in there, um, that's that's gonna be that's deadly. That's really scary and deadly. But Tinker is one of those heroes that can stop that from happening. We have still got the Razor in the pool, which is something that I Ten say because um, Razor is one of the heroes that we've seen banned Five in the first banning remaining. phase or picked in the first picking phase. I think hundred percent. I want to say hundred percent, and he's uh, he's ignored right now. Um, interesting. We've got the Razor. Uh, not, the, not the Razor, I mean the Lycan, and the Pugna, the Brew and the Juggernaut removed from the pool for the first banning phase. And uh, we have got the Storm as well as the Shadow Demon removed. And Shadow Demon is a counter towards Skywrath Mage. Uh, so they don't want to have that in the pool. And Skywrath Mage, also a hero together with the Razor that we saw actually banned um, or picked first a lot of the time. So surprising that he makes it all the way to Fruit the second pros, picking phase. Jikiro and Viper bent out. Razor. Now, there's your Razor. And I have Dire to just team. give a moment. I know he's banned. We're not going to see him. But Jikiro is really a hero that I'm expecting to see a lot more of. Um, so, uh, because of the liquid fire. So Fruit strong. He pushed pros, towers down so fast. We see it sometimes and we even see it sometimes in a mid lane because it can be very good. Depending on who, if you already know who you're going to be up against mid, sometimes teams keep that a secret, as in um, have their lineup so well balanced that, it, that there's Ten a lot of possibilities in terms of mid lane. But Jakiro, just why don't you give him a, a shout out there? Being Le Shrek, you've got yourself Nightmare followed up by Split Earth, uh, and as well with it's a lot of pushing power there with Le Shrek. So if there is going to be a kill happening, towers are going to fall with the Edict coming out from him and with the Death Prophet also pushing very hard. You're going to need that Tinker to get his boots to travel up real fast. He is going to be the one to keep the towers up. At the same time, he is not getting an easy lane because he most likely will be up against the Death Prophet. Um, it will be relaxed or most likely place a ward at the Ancients to make sure that Tinker is not going to get any extra farm from that. And Bane and Shrek are most likely going to be uh, roaming around to try and Dire make sure that the bad. Tinker is shut down. So it's going to be one to keep an eye on, to keep track of. And it looks like Virtus Pro is expecting that Faces Void is going to be on the off lane, leaving for a, a, a safe lane farmer to be picked up for Relax. And therefore they ban out the Luna, Ten which is a remaining. hero sword for the sounds. By the way, I'm, I'm removing the sound right now, as in Five seconds making it less. Remaining. Uh, but yeah, it means that, that Luna, of course, is also a carry that can also start pushing very early Virtus on because of her aura. Doom, a last ban uh, from uh, Relax. You are doing fine. Um, I want to point out that everybody on the side of, of Relax is actually in Relax apart from Artstyle, who has taken on his team name. So that's why. Grill casting? Yeah, sorry. I had to, I just can't, st I can't look at chat. Okay, Virtus Pro, last pick incoming. They have got themselves Ten already a mid laner. Me. Mirana could be carry, could be support. Uh, they have a lot Five of options. Oh, I me. like it. They go for Dire offline Brissa back, and I I really like it because. Oh, I like that one too. Okay, so sorry, over enthusiastic, but um, first of all, Bristleback. back. Now, the reason I like Bristleback is because you have got all this damage coming out, right? You're going to be stuck in a Chronosphere. The Exorcism is going to be there. And as a Bristleback, you've got yourself 
uh, the bristleback, actually. So taking less damage, and on top of that, you should be able to survive through the damage that is being thrown at you in the Chronosphere, and then turn it around and take the game. At the same time, Hellraisers now also have the Centaur, meaning that they can escape real fast from the bristleback if they need it. They can run away from the Tinker if needed. They can run in if they want to go for the perfect Chronosphere. Yeah, this game all of a sudden got a lot more exciting. Just by those two heroes. Ten seconds. I mean, they're not really specifically new heroes. Sorry for cat sounds. Five seconds um, because we have seen them played before. But they are heroes that uh, we don't see that often. And, and they're, just, they're just advertising aggression, which is something that, of course, is great. Let's take a look. Oh, God. They actually have a normal courier. That's surprising. Someone give Duba some other couriers, please. Aha, there we go. That's better. A frul. Okay, let's take a look at who's playing what. As uh, Virtus Pro will be playing from the Radiant side for this game. Uh, we are having ourselves a Marana played by Jodom or Medved. Uh, we've got Joel playing the Skywrath Mage. G or God, God kill them all, playing the Tinker, going into the mid lane. Sidoy on the Bristleback. And then last but not least, it is BZZ playing the Razor or 633 BZZ. Either one of those two. It is uh, the razor for him, and he looks to be going alone on the safe lane. He picked the reason I say that is because he got boots, uh, so might not get a lot of help from Marana and our Skyrath Mage, which means that they're gonna probably gonna try to help out that Tinker a bit more, and maybe even go for a bit of an aggressive trial next to that Bristleback. In the meantime, we got of course uh, Hell Razors or Team Relax, which they are on the dire side. And they're going to be having Dread, uh, famous mostly for his streams lately, but of course also a professional player standing in. Uh, he's, not, he's not standing in, he's actually a player for Relax, but since they have got a different tag, they all, their old tag does stand in apart from Artel. But Dread will be playing the Faces Void, Dubas will be playing the Bane, it will be Aloha Dance on the Centaur Warrunner, and he looks to be going on to the safe lane. And that means that we might have an aggressive try lane with a Void, as I do think Centaur will be by himself, uh, but with the Void, Lashrak, and Void can be by himself as well, so that's uh, that's fine, they can then roam together as well, and the last, uh, of course, or Arsta will play the Lashrak, did I already say that? No, the last to, uh, to be here, of course, is Yoki, and he'll be playing the mid-hero, uh, that's the Death Prophet, so that's gonna be his uh, his thing. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, we're waiting for the on-pause, and I think that this uh, Yoki guy is the reason why we were paused because he's now back and he can now come back into the game as I will try to make the cat sounds come to a minimal. I put him on the floor. How about that? Down. There you go. Okay. Alright, uh, let's see the lanes take uh, take shape. Uh, Void is indeed going towards the bottom lane, but Dread looks to be by himself for the moment. Has got a two tangos, a shield and a ward, so yeah, no supports for him. Not an easy lane for him. There might be a reason for the supports to actually stick around, also because they can actually kill him, maybe. They saw him place that ward. Cool ward, by the way. The other ward is in the inventory of Dubas. Seconds to battle. The one... Oh my god! He not only does not have any couriers, he also does not have any wards that uh, cosmetic effects, that is. Someone give that guy some things. But, uh, but yeah, in terms of laning, I guess it's pretty safe. That's the way that, um, that, that I can describe this one. So safe in terms of Dread will just get levels. Battle Bottom lane begins. is what he goes for. We've got a centaur trying to form a fast blink dagger on the top lane. I met Yoki... Uh, for uh, the Death Prophet, and that will leave our s our uh, also our Razor to farm safely on the safe lane. Uh, G will be in mid, and we already see Jotham. He's here to oh the cool word that is, but he's here to make sure that nobody is gonna place a word on the Ancients, and he's gonna make sure that uh, that nobody yes. indeed can uh, can stop that problem from happening. Smoke already broken. That's the first smoke spent. First smoke spent indeed, and that's gonna be um, a, sh a, sh a shame. That's that's a hundred gold down the drain, basically. Sidoy, thinking he could go toe to toe with the centaur, with uh, which he can definitely do. Uh, but now that the two supports are there, he's gonna have a bit of a tougher time. But yeah, Marana is is just here as a 
As a stacker, apparently a glorified creep. Okay. To be honest, there's no need to put her on the bottom lane. And it is definitely worth getting that Tinker his boost of travel up fast. So letting him get those ancient stacks later on is really needed. Because we already saw the amount of push that Relax has. And they, they need they need G to be gigantic. They they need him to be online early so that he can start launching his march of the machines. Nobody really is uh, in a position where they should die. Um, mid lane, even though we are seeing Mirana coming from the side, uh, should not die. And that means that we're going to have pretty stale lanes as well until some heavy rotations coming out. Even though already we... we of course we saw our Dubas and our style already rotating, but their smoke got broken so they can't really do much. Jotum, just checking out the jungle, see if he can find some people there, see if he can... Uh, See if there's stacks going on or anything like that, but it's not the case. In the meantime, Bristleback might be in some trouble, but we're looking here instead because it looks like G had some trouble. There's no Bristleback, it's the one we're going to. He is a very tanky hero, though. He has a shield, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Couple of hits needed. His quills are doing actually quite a bit of damage here. Have to be careful there, Artstyle. And uh, that is going to be Cedoy getting first blood because the damage came from the Bristleback and launch that quill before he actually died from it. So that's actually very worth it. Cedoy gets the first blood before he dies. And that is why you do not go for that. Like, that's why you don't stay close. That's the danger of a bristleback. But very good for Cedoy, obviously. Good trade. Good trade, indeed. Bristle bro. I think maybe if the Bane was around there, they could have had a better job. But Bane, of course, was uh, stacking and pulling to make sure that Cedar gets some some experience denied. Oh well, static link, nice block from Yo. Oh my God, look at that block! He no longer has a time. Look at that block. That's a kill right there. He drained enough damage. Ninety eight damage. Now that's already a lot damage. A lot of damage if you're level twelve. Imagine if you're level four, you got one hundred and twenty two extra damage with that. Oh God. Okay, so that's gonna be the second kill of, of the Team Verge Pro, and they're gonna maybe lose an, a hero here though, and this time, this time no, no bristle back, this time there's three. Nightmare into Split Earth into Hoof Stomp, there's no way to get out, that's gonna be Cedoy dead for realsies this time without retaliation. Two for two is the call, as uh, Yoki is uh, experiencing some minor difficulties here on the mid lane, he's 18 for one, so he is ahead on last hits compared to the Tinker who is 17 for four, 18 for four, so another even again. Uh, but he is uh, getting a rest quite a bit there. Has to be careful with all those rockets flying out and of course with the bottle being bottle crowed. He's crowing his own bottle as well. well. I say crowing, but it's still walking. That's a problem, guys. We're four minutes into this game. It's a competitive game. If this happens in your pub, fine, it happens in a pub. But if this happens in a competitive game, you better have a damn good excuse where you're not having a flying courier on deck. And that's so courtesy of Artstyle or Bane. Artstyle doesn't have money to upgrade it, but he does have boots. Bane does have money uh, to uh, upgrade yes. it, and he does have boots. Ooh, Artstyle actually uh, gonna turn on his edicts, and with both of them having boots, well, they can take out a level one Marana any day. That's gonna be a kill going the way of the Shrek. Should now be able to have money to upgrade his courier. If you really want to do art style, getting chased out as well. God is gonna help out. He has got some uh, lasers coming out, and that's indeed enough to get the kill in the end. And Lushrak therefore loses a bit of gold, but uh, still has enough to upgrade career if he really wants to do that. Should see it saying like, "Hey, our courier's still walking, guys. Shall I be a good guy, Lushrak, and upgrade it for you?" Oh, time walks away. No. Okay, but not. I thank you. I thank you. Stampede, Cedoy, Hoof Stump, Split Earth, Double Edge, and that is gonna be a kill, but it's gonna be a kill for the Bristle Bro, and uh, that might be actually a second kill. Yes, it is. Double kill for Cedoy. Worth, 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 worth. All the way worth. All the way to the fountain with all of them. And actually, this is e extra worth because Jotham comes here to take some experience and farm and he was still level 1 until now, so that happened. Uh, look at that! Whoo! It's flying, guys! You can fly, you can fly, you can fly! Sorry, that was Peter Pan. 
Um, yeah, so that's an upgraded courier. That's great. And that's also a static link. Uh, that's going to be forcing Dread out of the lane. In comes Dubas with a nightmare. And actually, are they? Nah, they can't do anything here. They do have Le Shrek coming out, but I don't think they can do anything here. Especially not with Skywrath coming in. This could turn out ugly for Dubas as he's taking a lot of damage. One more hit needed from BCC. Yep, that's a kill right there. In comes the Split Earth. Again, they should be able to take out BCC. Might be in some trouble though. There is another Plasma Field if they want to. They let it go. And that's going to be Yoki coming to help out. Dread living on four health points. Four HP. Ah, nice grip. Swarm. Yoki's ace turn paying off. And they get BZ in the end anyways. Very nicely done. Perfectly aimed into nothingness. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Bristlebrack sitting at level six. Level 6 for the Centaur as well. I mean, he's very much more farmed than the, than the Bristleback in terms of last hits, of course. But let's take a look at the net worth, how far they're apart. Not that far. Not that far at all. This is, this is a really good lane for Cedar, to be honest. Smoke Gang coming out. Art style Dubas rotating middle, wanting to help the... Well, wanted to kill the Tinker, but they're not going to be able to kill the Tinker. They might be able to kill Morana, though. Morana has got a leap. Leap first? Yes. Still the Nightmare though, and still the Split Earth. This is still going to be a dead Marana. There we go. Very easy kill. She was still level 2. At the same time, it doesn't really matter all that much because they are not shutting down Tinker, which is of course the one that they wanted to shut down. I don't know why he doesn't other March the Machines, because there's no creeps left. Nonetheless, he is sitting on 1700 gold, seven, and that's going to be close to, to his uh, Boots of Travel. As a Dread has got a Time Walk, apparently not really wanting to use it. Um, that's 105 extra damage for BCZ. Dyer's bottom tower is under and They attack. can maybe even take the tower with this. Where's the creep wave? Not there. Oh, it's very far away actually. Never mind that. See you, Dyer's three, bottom three, tower three, is one. under attack. Did he die once when I not didn't see it? No, he didn't. My bad. A lure dance. Blink dagger not yet on that. Went for treads first. Let's. Uh, I want you just want to take a point. For people that normally watch my cast, watch my watch my play. He went for treads, you know, tranquil boots, no treads. Fortified. Good. Just so you know, nightmare. Set up for what? Set up for what, guys? Set up for nothing, because there's no chronosphere. So no setup needed. It's a waste of mana. Jotam has smoked up, went back middle. He's still level 2. He's still one of those heroes that is Dyer's very sad right now. Has fallen. Because he doesn't have levels. And he kind of wants to have levels, for sure. Um... Bottom tower still went down, by the way. That was actually not the knight. PTZ takes the gold for it. Almost has a mechanism ready. And I think when that one is up, they might just try to rotate and go with five Cedoid. Dodges the split earth. Is thinking about maybe killing a lower dance because he's one hit away from dying. There we go. And that's going to be another kill. Double kill for him. No. No, sorry. No rockets flying to Arcel either. Yes, there is, but not enough. The self did enough uh, healing to make sure Arcel lives. Teleport in, and that's gonna be Tinker coming out. More rockets. We'll get the kill this time. Boots of travel in the house. Can't get any double kill, maybe. Starstorm doesn't hit. Jokey will live. Level 1 Starstorm. Not even sure if it was gonna kill him, anyways. In the meantime, Razor is actually taking care of Tier 1 mid. Trying to pressure down a bit, perhaps. Has taken out the creep wave that came in, and with the new creep wave, should be able to do quite a bit of damage to it. Not sure if it will be enough, but. It's enough for now, and that means that with the lineup that Relax has, that has a Death Prophet, that has an Exorcism, Le Shrek with Ida Edict maxing out, or at least level 3 for now, um, they have not managed to take it a single tower yet, which is uh, not good. Especially not since you would Did expect I? to see an attempt to shut down the Tinker more, and then make sure that you get some towers before the Tinker has his boots of travel up. Because in theory, now that the boots of travel are up on the Tinker, you can't really take easy towers. And if you do, you're going to trade them for something. Uh, because of Tinker. And uh, yeah, good luck trying to take towers now. We'll see. You have to kill the Tinker first. Maybe that can actually happen. There is, of course, a Chronosphere on deck. No blink there yet for the Tinker, even though he's farm. Is gonna skyrocket fast. I want to actually check out his gold per minute. It's sitting off 494 right now and I think we're gonna see that increase real fast. Look at the difference between his gold per minute and the highest one on Relax. And the, in the meantime the rest of Virtus Pro is just grouping up his five and going down mid lane for the moment just taking our towers because they can. Arrow misses. 
still zoning though. In comes a Tinker teleporting into the siege creep, and, and they can just be here. That's a tower going the way of a razor. Again, BTC getting pretty rich. They have that mechanism. What's gonna stop them from grouping up as five and taking everything down one by one? They will try to defend their tower, of course, on the top lane. But it's it's gonna get tougher and tougher for relax. So relax, you're doing not so fine. Oh, I'm sure I'm not the first one that makes that joke. I'm sorry, it's so lame. Lame jokes. Come to Shiver Gaming for lame jokes, guys. This is actually also a bit of a problem. Dubas and Artstyle are uh, mostly Dubas. It's kind of on their level. He's level 4. And you do want that Fiend's Grip to actually take down some kills. And, you know, get may maybe not even take a tower off the back of those kills. No, that's not why I say that. I mean, take kills so that the enemy team can't group up as 5 because they won't have 5 because one of them Radiant's will be dead. Middle tower is under hmm. attack. But yeah, you need to have level 6 for that edict. There we go. And this goes fast, Radiant though. Structures are fortified. Fortification used for it, but if the fortification was there, towers drop really fast with a level 1 edict. There is no mercy in pushing with edict, so they just need to get a tower attack. where there's no tinker, and they'll be doing just fine. In the meantime, this is the strategy of Virtus Pro, so they have got a 4 pushing down a tier 2 bottom. That means that there's two options for relax. Either they're gonna try to push a tower for themselves because they know they can't really fight a Virtus Pro, but they can't really do that because of the Tinker. Or they're gonna try and fight, in which case Tinker would come to the fight as well and the fight would actually be taken by, by Virtus Pro because they are, they're quite a bit ahead. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a no-win situation Radiant's for, uh, for Relax attack. and a bit of a win-win situation for Virtus Pro, Radiant's of course, as the tier 1 tower, tower still goes fallen. down in the middle lane. That is Lashrek for you. Stampede comes in, there is a blink up on the lower end, jumps in, goes for a double edge on the Skyrath Mage, who isn't the very very squishiest target that he could think of, but the mechanism heals him up again. Oh, BZZ might be in a bit too far. There is a Chronosphere for Dread. He thinks about it. Hits, a, hits two, actually. Yule walks into it as well. They should be able to kill him out. Exorcism coming out as well. Razor goes down. Sidoy. Oh, and the spirits. Tinker kills off already the center. The Void drops the Bane drop. And Artstyle and Yoki are running for their lives right now. Sidoy is actually not the right target to go on. The rockets fly. There goes... The last track and Yoki is the last one alive for his team. Is not getting chased because you don't want to deal with those spirits when you're getting chased. But Tinker comes to join the fight and it's over. It's over. They get the Chronosphere and they burst down the Razor, which was really nice, by the way. They did that real good. Uh, he actually did not spec up Eye of the Storm. And he already used his mechanism at that point, so I guess at that point his job was done. But then they went on Sidoy, who is the tankier target that you can go for. And Sidoy... Uh, returned quite a bit of damage with the quills and uh, the bristleback quills, of course. And then it goes the marching machine and rockets, and that's just cleaning, uh, cleaning up. Everybody is by that time so low that Tinker just has to press some buttons and everybody dies. There's nothing to it. There really is not. And now the Chronosphere and the Exorcism are on cooldown, so the only thing you have is an initiation from the Centaur, Dying which is pretty strong, is but his double edge is not enough to burst his um, even the squishiest target down by Dread, you're dead. Uh, so, and he gets healed up by the mechanism. Oh, Dubas also dead. Got hit by an arrow from the side from Jotham. Aloha Dance, he jumped in, couldn't get a kill. Actually, could get a kill this time. Uh, that it was the Skyrath Mage going down, but that's not worth your life. Uh, unless you can get a kill return. He actually got the double kill. Oh, that's the best that his team has done. Nonetheless, four for two. Not a favorable trade, especially not considering that a tower goes down. By the way, Marana, support Marana, level two at, what was it? Seven, eight minutes into the game? Yeah, she's level seven right now, and she's actually doing pretty nice. She's landing some nice arrows. Her Moonlight Shadow is going to be very effective, should... Relax, actually try to fight and go for people. Uh, but for the moment, Virtus Pro's like their 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 mill, their their ball. It's not a death ball yet, but their ball is rolling. And so far, Relax has not been able to shut it down. They are slowing it down a bit by getting the kill on the Razor twice now in a row. But it's not going to slow it down enough, I think. Oh, Art Style might be in some trouble. Sidoy has enough mana to actually take him down. And at the same time, Split Earth is still used, but yeah, you can't do anything. And uh, the lower dance also thinks, okay, goodbye, Art Style. You're dead. I'm I'm just gonna run away here because this top lane is no longer safe. There are four people on this bottom on this top lane. In the meantime, they're gonna teleport onto the Moonlight Shadow towards this bottom tier one. They're tier one, Zord dead though. Brain step still there. Dubas tries to run. I don't think he can. He's gonna try to teleport out, but no. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. And that's gonna be uh, Dread Tele for jumping out. 
Can they actually get some vision up on here? Dying An arrow could do it, but they have to wait eight attack. seconds. There's no TP scroll. Dread can jump away again in uh, five mana or five seconds, two seconds. I can count. Then comes the arrow, but it's too late, and they uh, oh 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 the backtrack. Oh, you're not dead. Monster kill! I can't believe that actually worked! He gets him! Ah. Tinker too powerful! The Tinker versus the Void, guys. Two, the two... Uh, oh, he jumped away. The, the two Pop Stomp heroes against each other. I do like seeing that. But... <laughs> good positioning from G, by the way. That was really good. That was really good. Uh, unfortunately... <laughs> Void could not really get out, but that's why you carry a teleport scroll, guys. Let that, let that be a lesson to you all. Use Scepter up on Yoki. Really need it as well, because then you can actually stand in March of the Machines with your ultimate and just put yourself up in the air. Not worry about a thing while your ultimate does its work. Uh, Ancient camp blocked now by uh, Re Lex, but I think it's going to be a bit too late to shut down that Tinker all too much. He has got the uh, uh, Ethereal Blade on the way. He's got the dag on. He's got the Blink Dagger. It is gonna be one of those scary tinkers that everybody hates to see unless he's on your team in which case you're pretty happy with the guy Dyer's top tower last tier one tower standing on the side of relax fortification will be used to try to delay the tower from going down but that's just it it's just delaying nothing more just delaying and trying to get whatever they can in the meantime Dyer's while we're pros doing that they get some farm fallen. mid they get some farm in the jungle but their bottom lane is pressured out by the tinker and their void is just not that far. He was offlane, so don't don't expect miracles from this phase's void, okay? He was offlane. Centaur is the one that you should be looking at because he was safe lane. He should be the one with the farm initiating, stomping, and doing the damage, but he doesn't really have that much farm himself. Look at the net worth. Everybody is very far behind on what they should be. Tinker is just skyrocketing his gold per minute. So, a moment ago, we checked gold per minute. Wait a second, this might be a Corona Sphere happens up on two. Moonlight Shadow coming out, though. Yul is gonna still be going down, but it's the only one. The squishy support gonna try for the next. Fiend Grip oh, coming out for Razor. They should be able to take him down, but at the back, it's a Tinker, it's a Bristleback, and they're just trying to take apart the lineup from Relax. Can they do it, though? It's two for one so far. Tinker actually takes a brilliant amount of damage, and they can't take him down. Cedo is just not able to do enough. And can't really find anybody to focus on. This is a fight that Relax is taking home. Yo, he bought back. He's back here. But why? Can they actually do something? Maybe when the exorcism is over. Maybe they want to try and jump back in again. Marana teleporting into the tier 1 is not going to be here fast enough. That's going to be Relax. Defending a tower successfully. Forcing out a buyback. And taking out 4 people in total. And that was because they didn't focus on Cedoy. Didn't focus on Cedoy is the vict road to victory here, apparently. But I was uh, showing the goal per minute, which is now a lot lower, so my point is not as strong. But the goal per minute graph looked about the same when I, I checked Dyer's it before, apart from that uh, Tinker went in, uh, went up about 100 goal per minute more, so give or take. Uh, that That's a pretty significant difference, and there's no Hand of Midas on the side of... Uh, relax, which means that there's no real way for them to catch up apart from taking fights and actually winning them and shutting down maybe Tinker if they can. Uh, we are seeing them still trying to defend their tower. It's risky though, they don't have a Chronosphere again. A nice time walk to slow things down though, but it's not enough. Stop! Oh, double edge on that! Ooh, on the Ethereal Blade, doing a lot of damage. Arrow flying in misses. The silence is there. A lower dancer will get brought down. Tinker still died. Fair enough. But that's two heroes dead, including the safe lane farmer, which is the centaur, which is still not going to be the one doing Dyer's the main part of the damage for a moment. And Dread at this point knows that he is more of a utility hero, so he, or rather for now, so he's going Dyer's for an Aghanim, so he can Chronosphere a lot. Chronosphere is, of course, the one that allows the Death Prophet Exorcism to do most amount of damage. But, uh, but yeah, this is still... This is still a risky game for Relax to win. They win some battles, but they're they're not winning the war just yet. A good observe word from the radiant side. Yeah, too bad that they don't have real a real uh, courier sniper. Yoki almost has a bloodstone ready. 
should start to really think about taking down some towers somehow. Or maybe, I, I actually that I'm not sure if that is even the right thing to do. So you you know that you're you're behind in this game if you're relaxed. So there's a couple of options. You can try to secure some towers, but I think what they're doing is probably the best thing, which is uh, trying to wait for Virtus Pro to try and push in and then hope that they make a positioning mistake so that you can go in on that and then and then fight off the back of that yeah I think that and then that that's what they're seemingly trying to do and I think that's the best choice as well because if you would lose a fight right now that was started on your terms you probably lose more than you otherwise would we can't afford to take those fights until Faith's Void is maybe more farmed. That was the last outer tower, by the way, setting on a set of Relax. So that means that there's a four tower difference between the two teams. It's a lot of gold difference as well. Uh, straight line up from uh, a while ago where we thought it needed was maybe a comeback. But uh, no, 10k gold in favor of Virtus Pro. Had some hiccups, still doing strong. Experience graph not as strongly in favor in Virtus Pro. Still in favor, don't get me wrong. But there is no Midas's involved, and on top of that, it's been a five-man Dota for a bit for a Virtus Pro, which actually costs you a bit on the experience, and that's why they're a bit lower, uh, a bit lesser ahead than you would expect, maybe. As uh, Tinker almost has... Oh, wow, actually, I'm surprised he levels up his Dagon before his Ethereal Blade. Uh, before he buys his Ethereal Blade. I thought he would get that. Uh, so far, the Ethereal Blade is actually, or the, the Ghost Scepter is actually not helping him all that much because Centaur is the one that jumps in on him, and his double edge is still pretty painful if you're in a Ghost Scepter. So um, he's still getting stunned, he's still getting double edged as. Ooh, Dread, hello. Time walks away. Rockets Dyer's still fly up to both people. We have got five heroes here. They jump in. Tinker, Ghost Scepter walks away. Fiend's Grip. Catches the Marana and Marana will drop. That's a gem. That's uh, that's a big deal. That's a very big deal. They need to try and get it back. Chronosphere comes out. That's gonna be Cedoy with the exorcism. Can they burn it down? To Look at how tanky that guy is. And he actually lives. Still, he is gonna die after the Chronosphere is over. Unstoppable Yoki for that one. As a BCC doesn't really know where to go. Doesn't want to stand in that exorcism march in the machine. So be his safe haven for the moment. Silence up on the centaur. They're gonna try and fight this. In comes Void, still able to take out the Razor. And a Tinker, a not allowed to teleport out. And that is gonna be one dead Tinker there as well. Three for one, worth it definitely for Relax. And the moment that you thought it was the comeback wasn't a comeback anymore, the comeback turns into an actual comeback again. So very good fight for Relax. Disorganized fight for Virtus Pro. And losing the Marana there is a pretty big deal. And mostly not because it's a Marana, but because of that gem. Map control is everything. Everything, guys. And also, of course, the Marana ultimate. A, a bit less uh, effective this way. Bristlebeck starting to build up towards getting a Heaven's Halberd, I would assume. Uh, you already get your speed from the ulti, so you don't really need to have a Saiji Yasha, but a uh, Heaven's Halberd to stop that Faceless Void from hitting is pretty big. Although, we saw how long he lived. Imagine if he has a heart or some other defensive item after that. I mean, he lived for a long time, and they used a lot on him. The Chronosphere was positioned perfectly, though, because it, it, it might have already caught one, but it made sure that nobody could from his team could come to help Cedoy. Nobody could back him up. It was pretty good. One K away from having an Agonyms on Dread. And when that happens, perhaps they're gonna be trying to be a bit more aggressive, trying to go for a bit more fights. And I say that, and I do realize that it was relaxed that first at that previous fight. Relax that profited from the mistakes that Virtus Pro made in terms of positioning. And you see the difference that that fight makes for Virtus Pro. They are so much more passive than they were before. They're just back on their own side of the map. They're farming, thinking, okay, we need another couple of big items before we go again. It's all fine, it's all good, but it's still interesting. Agonim is done for BZZ. 2400 gold. Oh, Bilish Shrek. Oh, does that mean Ethereal Blade done? Nope. 
That was just a dag on three and some rockets and a laser. Mow. Look at the cat watching me. I don't know why. Why is he watching me? Radiant's top tower is the under is attack. Watching me. He's watching me watch the game. My voice is starting to be stupid. I need to drink some water. I'm gonna drink some water while we look at y'all. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Okay, that was an empty water bottle that you heard fall. So. Well, Yule is very interesting, right? Farming in the jungle. Not the fastest way of farming. <laughs> See, he recharges us on his urn. He's normally the first one to die if people die in a fight, so he's kind of sad with the one with the urn. 1900 gold up on the Tinker. Curious to see if he's going for the next level down. Probably not. He's probably this time gonna go for the for the ethereal blade. Blow people up. Brace their builds for the bane. Dubas realized that this game might be a bit tough and needs some health to sustain uh, himself to make sure that he can actually walk a bit through March of the Machines to get to a target to King's Grip. The centaur is the carry of the gem. Good choice. It's normally in the middle of the fight. And is pro of course a pretty tanky hero as well. And on top of that, he's gonna build a blade mill, which I like because it's really good against Yol. Sun and the Mystic Flare, you're you're maybe even killing, even might be even killing him. Marching the machines, you've got yourself the Star Storm, even though that's not that big, but you got yourself the Bristle back. Quill spray, it's it's really good to have a blade mill against a team that has a lot of AOE damage, and definitely this team has a lot of AOE damage. Virtus Pro is gaining some confidence back, guys. They're Venturing into enemy territory, they're trying to shut, relax into their base to make sure that there's no farming space left. They might not want to try and force out a fight just yet, but they're at least trying to control the map again. And they need a new gem for that, and maybe some wards as well, because they don't have any wards on the map apart from this one, as well as this one. Which is a really good ward, by the way, because if you're up against uh, people with a gem, you have to get creative in terms of warding, where people normally don't check. That is pretty good. Then and um wait a second they know where she is now she did a crypt swarm but she's not showing herself oh my god that would have been such a brilliant arrow guys that would have been an amazing arrow, but I don't think they could have done anything off the back of it, but it would have still been an amazing arrow. Uh, but yeah, uh, what was I saying before that? Oh yeah, wards. So uh, this one is kind of obvious. If someone, if the center walks past it, they should see it. Actually, that one just disappeared. But yeah, they should get some map control back in terms of wards, in terms of vision. That ward actually just got countered. I should get the gem back, perhaps. So maybe go for a smoke gank. I think smoke gank would be nice. Okay, would be nice. Yeah, Ethereal Blade is about done. We just get to the shop. What? He goes for Diagon 5 over Ethereal Blade, guys. I'm lost. I could have hit Roshan. Roshan attempted by Virtus Pro. I say attempted, but this should just be a clean Roshan kill. They might trade it for a tier 1 tower. Somewhere they tried to do, I think. I say that because I think they could have and protected the tower and taken Roshan as well. But, oh well, it's a trade. It's fine. And they get it. Void gets a kill on the tower, some extra gold for him. That should be Aghanim's. Oh, he was already done for him. Razor picks up the Aegis. And uh, he is going for a heart after his Aghanim's. No refresher for him. Unfortunately for us. So you have uh, Ethereal Blade being built up by the Skyrath Mage, which is an item that I'm not really convinced is a great one to have. Because you need a lot of lockdown to really, like... And the Blade Mill, it's so easy to counter it as well. But, oh well, we'll see if it's going to be paying off. Even if, if he kills the... Um, if he kills the Death Prop with it, that's pretty, pretty worth it. She's very tanky. Are they going to actually try to fight here? Looks like they might be. Oh, jumping forward, Chronosphere, and again, perfectly orchestrated. Nobody can get in range, and Arrow will still hit up on a Centaur, and nice 
Skywrath ulti trying to help out. Zero is still alive for the moment. Now can start hitting some quills again. He's invisible for the moment as well. Double damage rune coming out for Dread, but his damage is also drained. Zero is still alive. The gem is still up on the deck. No stun. There is a bash. That's gonna be Dread dead before anything else though. Still they get Cedar, but it took them so long to take him down. They got in so far. They're gonna lose the gem again. Art style will end up dropping three down for just one. They, they took so long. I just... That's... That's a typical mistake. You know, you really want to get that kill on the Bristleback, right? But that's not worth throwing your life away for, guys. And with this gem, with these kills, they can't, could even try to see what they could do for the high ground because they still have got the Razor up. He's still alive. He's got his Eye of the Storm up in 28 seconds, which is, uh, well, which is a shorter cooldown than the Centaur being getting up, uh, getting up again. But that Bristle lasted so long that he, like, that, like, yeah. You know what I mean. That's just not good, guys. Decision making. It's just a, it's, it's a bit too greedy. It's it's what I would call Russian Dota. Unfortunately for uh, Verge Pro, they can't transition that into an actual push, though. They don't try. Too many people dead. Well, Bristleback dead, most of all. And they don't really have it, like we, we're, I, like they don't even really have a pushing hero apart from the razor. We talked about how fast Relax can push with the um, with the edict as well as with the death prophet ultimate, of course, the exorcism. But Virtus Pro only really has razor with his ultimate right now, and that's the fastest way for them to push. So they just normally, like, they have to have the ex the the eye of the storm up for him to actually do some damage to towers. This is a heart central right here, by the way. Death Prophet has a heart. Razor has a heart. Zero is building a heart. Is there more people? Centaur probably wants to have a heart. Everybody wants to have a heart. Have a heart. I've seen it. Ah, there we have it. Took you long enough. Ethereal Blade now with Dagon 5. Let's see which target is gonna fall to the Onslaught of the Tinker first. He's actually gonna teleport into the Creep Wave. And that is the less obvious one. As in, he doesn't show that he's teleporting into uh, the Creep. So, let's see who's gonna snipe. Because I think he can definitely snipe almost anybody. No, he can't snipe the Death Prophet. She is super tanky. He can snipe the Lashrak and the Bane. Perhaps avoid if no backtrack. Yeah, avoid too if no backtrack. I think the Central and the Death Prophet are too janky. Tinker's still not showing himself. He's waiting for that. Oh, now he showed himself. This is an interesting game, isn't it? Everybody's standing around waiting. Great. Ooh, an arrow actually hits upon the Death Prophet. Are, they are gonna go in on it. The Split Earth, though, hits upon the Razor. He already turned his ultimate on. This could be trouble for Relax. They have the pipe on. In the meantime, it's just a tower that is focused by, uh, by Virtus Pro. So they're just doing objective Dyer's gaming right here. Tinker just marches the machines. Nobody can win. They got the tier 3 tower and they back off. I have the Storm is almost out. So if they do this again when the Eye of the Storm is up again, that's like... Like, this is the type of game that you normally don't see from from uh, Russian teams. They just were very, very focused on that tower and just made sure that they didn't overextend. They didn't dive. It's just objective Dota. So all I need you need to have. Bloodstone being built up by the Leshrek too as well, by the looks of things. Two K gold up on the centaur. They give. He's gonna go for a heart. He's gonna do that only when he actually has got all the um, gold for it. And again, pushing mid lane. The, that uh, that agent is about to disappear. By the way, we saw the the countdown just coming. It's about twenty or fifteen seconds, ten seconds by now. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
Five, four, three, two. Oh, that was the second too early. Oh, that's a shame. That's so close. Let's see. Objective gaming from BCC. Arrow in the meantime hits upon ourselves, so you can't really pass up on that opportunity to drop him low so that the Eiffel Storm would actually focus that. And uh, that is going to be Void already dying. That was Tinker that blew him up. He bought back instantly because he still have the Chrono. But that's uh, Eye of the Storm and half the damage done to the tower. Eye of the Storm is not yet over though. He goes back in. Creeps will drop fast and tower is going to be next. And I mean, even if Chrono comes out for him, I mean, that's not worth it. The silence is there. BZ still gets quite a bit of damage on him. Double Edge comes out as well, but is that worth it? Could that be worth it? Extra system used as well. They get the faces void again. Tinker is able to force uh, get forced up to the... Whoa! No, that's careful. Don't jump in there. Gets arrowed there and bursted down by G. Has got some mana left. That's going to be two heroes dead. Razor actually bought back and he is coming back into the fight as well. As he's walking as fast as his little legs. Probably doesn't even have legs. He's floating as fast as he can. In the meantime, the fight's not yet over. Ethereal Blade. And Dagon 5 doing work. Triple kill. And that's going to be no triple kill if he has one laser. But he can't because he's yield up. And it's Skyrath Mage that takes the kill in the end. Juice, man, oof, stop. Fiend's grip on the Tinker as well. Four stop. Is it enough to get him into safety? No, it's not. He'll end up dropping. And he buys back. Back here in a second as a lower dance will go down. BCZ showing that he's mad that he died. And it's showing, showing pretty damn good. There goes Yoki as well. Dagon's hitting him. And he is silenced up. Used up in the air. Can't really go anywhere. Doesn't have his ultimate and will end up dropping. He gets a silence off, but it doesn't matter. It is a five man down and it's time to take out some towers. Everybody alive on Virtus Pro, everybody they were dead on Relax. And this could be actually the end of the game. Fortification comes out. Void is back alive. Has actually got a chronosphere. Doesn't have any sources of damage though. As he is not really the source of the damage. The extra system is the source of the damage. 26 seconds until that is back up again. But after this lane of Rex, Virtus Pro backs off. And uh, we'll allow Relax to recuperate and uh, prepare for the next assault. Well, all the buyback timers are starting to uh, get back to zero again. Look at all these buybacks. Tinker bought back. Centaur bought back and died again. Razor bought back. Avoid bought back and uh, died again as well. And uh, Bane bought back and died again. And the Shrek did not buy back. The only one. Haze. And together with the Death Prophet. I thought Verge Pro could take more than that one lane of racks after that fight, but I guess this is the safe way to do it. Again, they're they're showing a lot of control. A lot of precision. Shiva's guard now up for uh, the Death Prophet. That will be definitely helping in the next fight. But again, they need to fight in like the for Verge Pro they, they can't really fight with the exorcism up because it's it's so much damage. And for Relax, they can't really fight without the Exorcism because they don't really have another source of damage until this uh, this Faces Void gets some damage items up, so it's it's pretty risky. At the same time, it's a Faces Void. He can 1 versus 5 a team if he's farmed enough, so if they delay this game long enough, then they're doing fine. They're doing better than just fine. Smoke up. Relax. You're doing fine see what they can find. We see, of course, the minimap. We see that they might be able to find a support. Skyrath is there. And they're actually... This is very obvious, though. I mean, there's creeps hitting their tier 4 towers, and they're not defending it. Wow. Where do you expect the team to be, guys? Dyer's middle tower is under yeah, attack. that was a bit obvious. Roshan's back up again. That's what they were aiming for. Ooh, Arrow actually hits up on Dread, so no Chronosphere for a while. They take out our style before the fight even starts. Yoki went for the Echosim. Fiends grip up on Sidoy. He gets forced up into safety, though. Nobody really doing the damage. There comes the Chronosphere. Now they focus up on Sidoy. Can they do it? I don't think they can. Uh, they're gonna try, though, as uh, that is gonna be Sidoy taking down the Centaur while all, all of this is happening. The Exorcism Spear still chase down Sidoy as he's just kiting them around. Kind them around, delaying his death until the very last end. Dread uh, alive again because Death Prophet died and gave a lot of health, but it doesn't matter. It's Team Wipe once again. Nobody died on the side of Virtus Pro, and everybody dead are in Relax. And if you're wondering why Void all of a sudden got back to full health, that was Death Prophet's Bloodstone healing up the only remaining teammate. 
of his team. And the Shrek is already back alive and already dead again. <laughs> Oh, the Shrek was the first one to die in that fight. He was the one that got picked up. GG gets cold. There we have it. Virtus Pro you take the last game of day three of Starlighter Season 10 European Division. Thank you for watching, guys. My name is Shiver. I am uh, solo casting today. And um, I hope you enjoyed my cast. I'm going to play some games probably after a short break because I need to wind down a bit. And... Uh, Maybe get some food or something. I wouldn't know what though, because I already eat my cashew nuts. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll be back in a bit. Oh yeah, and follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube and follow me on Twitch. It's all under the same name of Shiver Gaming. Thanks.